All right, why don't we get started? Obviously, like guys, this is Rob Alberino from the great class of 1988, executive producer uh, for the uh, San Francisco 49ers, headed to the Super Bowl. Um, what I'll do is I'll give a little introduction. I'll, answer, I'll ask a couple questions. And we're going to open it up to you guys to, to ask some questions. Um, can't thank him enough for taking time out of you – guys, you guys can't imagine what type of schedule he's under. He's leaving Sunday uh, to go to Miami. He's actually going to spend his 50th birthday in Miami, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, but Rob is, uh, like I said, an 88 graduate, classmate of mine. We sat in French class together for uh, four years, and uh, we had some fun in that class with Madame Perry, right? That's um, right. He's won 62 Emmys. That's 62, guys. That's not like six. That's not one. That's 62. All right. So, uh, Rob, why don't you just give a little background, uh, you know, from your Notre Dame experience and, and how you got to where you are now working with three different NFL teams? Absolutely. And if, uh, you know, there's sometimes there's a little bit of lag. If I'll, I'll try to talk uh, nice and slow, but if, if you need me to repeat myself, just let me know. This is open conversation with us all. Uh, first of all, super honored to be here um, with everybody and I hope everybody can hear me pretty well. Um, this, uh, I'm a New Haven kid, probably like a lot of you guys in there. Uh, my dad lives in Cheshire. My mom lives in Brantford uh, still and um, just Missed the East Coast terribly, so you know, give it a hug for me uh, when you can. I um, I graduated in '88, as uh, Steve mentioned, and uh, went to Duquesne University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And all along, you know, a lot of people ask me, "How did I get to where I'm doing? How did I get to do the things that I that I've been doing?" Um, it's actually pretty amazing. You know, my my dad was a my dad owned a restaurant in Hamden on Dixwell Avenue. My mom was a secretary. Uh, you know, I didn't come from a line of uh, movie makers or, or, or directors or producers or sports people. Um, it, it, uh, it was just something that I always loved. I loved to write and I loved to create. And I knew at probably your age that I was going to be doing something. I had no idea it was going to be in sports. Long story short, went to Pittsburgh, um, had a double major when I was at Duquesne University uh, in media production and sound recording technology. So really kind of almost a music major and a production major. Um, and uh, worked my way through school, had an academic scholarship. Um, actually, Duquesne came and visited uh, Notre Dame and, and sold me on going there uh, in one of the college fairs. And, and I'll, I'll never forget the day I met the uh, admissions officer and just loved it. So, so really, that paved my way. Um, once I graduated, I had a job literally the next day. I graduated, I want to say, May 5th in 1992. On May 6th, um, I was working for ABC Sports in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I had the beautiful, uh, glorious, uh, glamorous three in the morning till 11 a.m. shift. And so uh, my whole world was kind of set upside down. Um, but at that time, I was also on the radio uh, spinning jazz and classical music because music was always my forte. So I was doing nighttime shifts and then I'd slide right over to the three to 11 shift. It was only things you can do when you're about your guy's age. And uh, somebody heard uh, some of the things that I was I was actually physically writing some some uh, editorials in the morning that ran on the morning show. Somebody called me, happened to be a filmmaker in Pittsburgh who did some pretty big movies um, like Hoffa and Silence of the Lambs and some other big movies like that. And he called me and asked me to be a uh, he asked me to be a producer for his company uh, called Dalia Witkowski Productions. It's now changed. It's called Mind Over Media, um, but. I worked there and I was actually given a project. Um, I did some very, very not glamorous things there. I, I worked on tons of corporate pieces like Xerox and all these kind of boring things, but it taught me how to take a boring project and make it amazing. It taught me how to be creative. So amazingly enough, Penn State football, our clients, and I actually started to create a show for Penn State football, which took off and became the first college football program to go to all 50 states. And I did that when I was about 23 years old. So I was really blessed to do that. Um, at that time, NFL films, if you, how many guys in this room uh, are NFL fans? All right. All right. Good. Good. So if you've seen this show on Showtime called Inside the NFL, that show used to be on HBO and I wrote that show. Uh, they asked me to come and write that show for HBO, and I loved it. I did it for three years, went to uh, NFL Films and became their youngest filmmaker in, in their history. And then uh, I got let go, being really honest. The eight youngest guys got let go. They basically ran out of money. It wasn't a, it wasn't a, a, um, a performance thing. It, it wasn't, uh, did you do the wrong thing? Just one day, boom, all you worked for is gone. And I'll never forget, it was Valentine's Day 1997, and I went back to my house in Philadelphia because NFL Films was in Philly. 
And uh, I was devastated because I had been on my own since I was about 18. Once I left home and I had a scholarship, that was it. I was really kind of doing my thing. And my, my folks were incredibly supportive, but we didn't have a, a wealth of, of money. And uh, I didn't know what to do. I had about $4,000 that could basically extend my, uh, you know, my time in Philadelphia. And I was going to have to head home. And amazingly enough, the, the, I was kind to a person about a month earlier in a big snowstorm. I helped him change his tire. So it turns out that he ended up certainly learning how to change your tire, dudes, because it's a, it's, a, it's a good thing to get you somewhere. He called the Eagles and said, hey, we've got this kid who we love, and he just got let go. Um, I know you're looking for somebody. And I became uh, the director of production for the Eagles. And over the course of 14 years, uh, I was with that club in Philadelphia. And I learned everything there is to learn about football, the business of football, and I became a vice president for the team. My boss then left and went to the Kansas City Chiefs, who will be facing next week. Uh, he became the president, and uh, he basically, uh, no pun intended, laid out the red carpet for my family to come there and run about a third of the team. And uh, I was there three years. We had done some amazing things in some very bad times with the Chiefs, and they were known as a very good business operation. And after the third year, when my contract was up there, the 49ers called me. Uh, I'll never forget. Um, they called me and they said, L don't talk to anybody else. We're sending a plane. We want you to come here and be our vice president. Um, and so I've been here for seven years and the journey's been unbelievable. And, um, and you know, it all started in the seats. Well, not exact seats that you guys are in because that room's looking pretty sweet uh, down there when I was there. But it all started, you know, in the same kind of position that you guys are in. I was hungry. I wanted to do something when I got it, and uh, I put my head down and I went and attacked it. All right. Now, uh, just did you change a tire for a guy that got you a job? Is that is that what you just said? Uh, a nice Italian guy. He um, he was just did not know how to change a tire. He was just a little little dude, and he um, I, I just saw him struggling outside of my apartment in Philadelphia, and I knew it was going to be a huge snow. We actually got six feet of snow that weekend and so I was packing my car to go because I, I lived in Philly NFL films was in Jersey right across the bridge so I was packing my car to sleep in my office because I knew people I just wanted to work over the weekend and I knew people were going to call off so I was like forget about it I'll just sleep there and I came out the snow came down the flakes were huge and I just remember the guy struggling I'm like dude you're never going to get out of there let me help you and within five minutes we changed his tire his name is Rick Angeli and then truth be told that night he was sleeping at NFL Films. We were getting a cup of coffee at the cafeteria at like two in the morning. And he looked at me and I looked at him and he's like, you just changed my tire. And, I'm, you know, we ended up having a, a late night bite and we became friends. And, and it's just little, little tiny karma relationships like that, you know, in the world that can help you get to where you want to be. So be kind to everybody because you never know who's going to be your next boss or, you know, you, you have no clue. No question. No question. So what projects do you work on a daily uh, basis with the team? I'm um, saying, say it one more time, Steve. What, what projects do you work for uh, on oh. a weekly basis? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I'm, am I, am I cutting out for you guys? Yes you, or no? Not you so froze a little bit, but now we're back and it's, it's operational. So we're okay, good. cool, cool. You just good, good. You just let me know and I'll, I'll go slow. So what do I work on with the team? So, so really, generally speaking, I have, um, I have 35 people on my team, uh, 21 men and 14 women. And basically, we do everything that moves and makes sound. So um, broadcasts, media, game day, um, all of our social media accounts. You guys know all those Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snap, all that stuff. Um, any of the marketing, any of the branding. Um, I work directly with our coach, Kyle Shanahan. I work directly with our GM, John Lynch. And I live, breathe, and eat with the players. Um, you know, my job is to, is, is to be the one positive beacon. And it's easy when you're in the Super Bowl. But in the last four or five years, we've been a, a, you know, a very mediocre team. Um, and there's 30, 40 people's job in the media to, to write terrible things about us and uncover this and uncover that. My, my job is to find the positive lining um, you know, in the team and, and bring out incredible stories because we have an incredible team. So, so I literally, I, I, I connect with the team on a daily basis and then I amplify that to literally the free world. All right. I don't even want to ask this question. How many hours do you typically work during a week? As I how get many older, do you not work is the smarter. question. 
Yeah, that's a good, no, it's, I appreciate it. Uh, you know, just like a lot of your moms and dads, you know, I'm grinding, it's a job, just like anything else. And, um, you know, for me in this time, it's uh, very abnormal. I'm working probably 80, 90 hours a week. It's, it's, a, it's a very rough, look, at, we call it champagne problems. There's 30 other teams that wish they were working 90 hours a week right now. So let me put an asterisk next to that. Um, on a typical week, um, 60 hours a week is a, is a pretty good thing. But in, in, a, in a business that you will love, which I'm sure a lot of you will find something that you love, that really is the key to success. You never stop thinking about work. You know, it's, I always say that, you know, when times get rough, I wish I had my paper route back because when I was a kid, you used to deliver newspapers and it was easy. You went home and you never thought about the newspaper that you delivered to that house or this house. You know, I'm sure your teachers go home and they're working when they're not at school. They're thinking about their their syllabus they're thinking about what they have to do it's the same thing for me i can't watch tv and, and think boy that would be great if i could find a way to do that i can't listen to a song and think about how i can assimilate that to game day i can't i mean my phone rings at two three in the morning um you know, coach needs something at five or six and i have to be ready to roll uh it is a, a life choice um unfortunately but I, I i sometimes wish that uh life was easy and i could just kind of punch a clock and be done um, but 60 hours a week, my butt is in a seat or in the stadium. I'm actually in the stadium right now. So the stadium, this is Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. We're about 25 miles north of San Francisco. Right out my window here uh, is it's a practice field. And I and I control three spaces in the building, two big studios and a control room. Um, and the locker room's right beneath me. So I can literally walk downstairs and just, just connect with the, the fellas or, or coach. Um, all their classrooms are right beneath me. So I'm, I'm here all the time and mentally and physically here all the time. How much has technology changed over the years to, to make your job easier and more, you know, amenable to the fans? Great, great question. Um, you know, so for those of you who don't know the moniker, right, San Francisco is Silicon Valley. Everything you ever loved, anything that you're using, all of this stuff, all of these, the Zoom that we're looking at, I mean, Truthfully, with the exception of Tokyo, Japan, this is the epicenter of the world uh, for technology. So one, technologically, we have to be ready to connect. If I have a problem with Facebook and I was with the Eagles or the Chiefs per se, I have to get on a phone call, I've got to connect. Here, I literally get in my car and I drive to Facebook. It's like 12 miles from here. Twitter, Google, eBay, I pass them on my way to work. Um, it's almost a joke, that's how close it is. Um, if you actually watch the show Silicon Valley on HBO, it's spot on. So I'm an East Coast kid in the middle of Silicon Valley. So the, um, the, uh, the tech portion is huge. Levi Stadium is a massive, massive hub for tech. We actually have more Wi-Fi in this stadium than the city of Los Angeles. Like 40x any, um, any stadium in the league. You know, all 70,000 fans can be streaming something on their phone while they're watching the game they can interact with the video boards and to answer your question steve even more directly we can now sell partnerships in the game to like intel or levi's or you know pepsi or visa where people can physically interact and their data can be passed back and forth um, to be captured by these companies so how does tech help my job incredibly because now we're able to make a lot more money with, with fan interaction but on my physical creation as a, as a filmmaker, as a writer, as a producer, um, the cameras that I'm using are $125,000 cameras. It's what they're shooting all the movies, you know, the Avengers movies on. We're working with the mirrors and these F-55s and these, all these big rigs. Um, it, technology has made the product better and more consumable. You know, we're hitting markets like China. We're hitting markets like Mexico. Um, so it allows us to touch base with quality pieces in people's native languages. Um, just unbelievable, the expansiveness of what we're doing. It's all based on, on the ability to do so because of tech. I'll ask one more question, then we'll open up to some of the guys here. But what have you been yeah. working on this week to get down to Miami? And then what will you be working on once you get to Miami for the big game? Yeah, so, so I want to get people hyped up, right? I, wanna, I, want, I want people who are 2 or 92 to be super hyped up about our team. And um, I've been writing some really cool things. You can see everything that we do on 49ers.com. Um, if you have a Twitter account, it's at 49ers. If you have IG, it's at 49ers. Um, and then if you want to follow what I'm doing, because I typically post a lot of my stuff, robertalberino.com is my site. 
and then you can follow me through there. But I'll take my best of and cram it on that site just for fun. I am, um, I'm working with alumni, guys like Jerry Rice, Joe Montana. These guys have actually become really good friends, and I'm, I'm not name dropping to a family of kids. Um, these are guys who walk into my office and ask for stuff, and so now it's my turn to ask them for stuff. Hey, I need you to do this for me. Hey, I need you to do this. And um, we are planning on a literally hourly basis to bring the, the most killer stuff to, um, to the fans. We have blocked out through all the way through kickoff on Sunday, some incredible things that we're going to be doing. Um, you know, the one thing that I'm working on is pulling together all the best moments from 2019 and putting those out every single day on our, our channel, which is, which is 49ers.com, which gets, you know, about a million people a day come to it. So it's a pretty significant amount, you know, of folks and, and we're a, a pretty large franchise with a big following. So we're feeding that beast with just great content, interviews behind the scenes, you name it. Um, you know, really, really cool hype reels. There's one coming out on Monday that I did with a, one of our um, alumni named Bryant Young, who's an incredible human. Um, and if you see it, even if you're not a 49ers fan, you might want to like put your hand through a wall because it's we've been working on it for about four weeks. Uh, I got someone here who you might remember from your days back at uh, in the classroom, uh, Coach Parkinson here, who's a Philly native. He has oh, a question for you. Versions. What's up, Coach? How are you doing, Rob? Uh, I'm doing great. Great version. to see you. <laughs> Congratulations on everything. <laughs> Could you talk a Thank little you, bit sir. about your mentors um, along the path that you've uh, selected and chosen and stuff? Yeah. Uh, wow. That it. It. Yeah. It's something that I think about, uh, Coach, all the time. It's something that I think about all the time. What we we um, you know we tend to use the word mentor, and a mentor is definitely somebody who's guiding you. Um, I like a cooler word. It's a center of influence. And I have uh, two centers of influence, which, uh, you know, above and beyond the people that that truly, I mean, nobody does anything by themselves. I don't care if you if you're in your room and in, in this room right now and you're thinking to yourself, dude, I got this and I got that. If you're lucky enough to have your folks still one of your folks or both of your folks I talk to my mom and my dad every day. They're the greatest human beings I know. And, and they're split up. They make it really hard for me when I come home. I can never come visit Steve Kirk because I can't get to Notre Dame because I'm constantly traveling between people's homes. But those, those people were the basis for my success. They gave me uh, um, the passion. They gave me um, the wherewithal and the means and, and also the motivation. You know, sometimes a kick in the butt to do the things I needed to do. But there are two people in this world that I can't live without that don't have my blood flowing through their body. One of them is the, the, this is going to be terrible because we beat him. It's going to be awful, but he's the president of the Kansas city chiefs. His name's Mark Donovan. And he really believed in me tremendously. And uh, we, we have one of those uh, relationships where we can look at each other. We don't even have to have a conversation. Um, he is a Pittsburgh guy. Uh, so he is, a, he is an East coast guy as well. An incredible human being. Um, but you know, my, uh, my, you know, my dad, my mom, uh, and Mark, and then there's a last one. His name is Matt Yandora. And, uh, I became, I, I, I became lucky enough to become a part of the United States army 10 years ago as a, um, as a, a sergeant in theater information operations, which basically means they allow me to tag along and, and teach leadership and, and all these amazing things. And, um, the, uh, Matt Yandora, Colonel Yandora, who will soon be a general, um, he is really my center of influence coach on the, on the human side. He's the guy who calls and asks for nothing and asks, Hey, how can I help you? Um, I talk to him every single day. Um, so, so it's good to have, you don't need a lot of them. You only need one or two of them, but find those people cause they will help you. And I think I, I think I see a handsome guy in the left-hand screen over there leaning with jeans on it. I think that's my father. What's up, Poppy? We had a little surprise for you. We reached out to someone with one of your mentors and, uh, Thought we would have him come today and uh, ask you a question. That's my that's my beautiful that's my beautiful uh, stepmom Lizzie and that's my dad Bobby. Dad, when'd you graduate? 1961. 1861. No. Who'd you go to school with, Moses? I was a, I was a, <laughs> I was a child prodigy. Listen, I want to know where you got your good looks and intelligence. I got it from my mother, Jean. <laughs> was it? Good luck. I was we were looking for Thursday. Yeah, so I'm um, my I'm flying my dad down uh, to the Super Bowl with uh, my little sister, and I can't wait. Uh, don't don't bring me bad luck, Poppy. You better bring me good luck. I'm right here. Can I say it? So, Rob, 
Who do you think is going to yes, win Lizzie. the Super Bowl? You know what? If there's a, if I've been so good, I'm just praying to God that just want 25 years. I just need one piece of jewelry, just one. So I'm hoping it's us. <laughs> Love you guys. Love you, Poppy. Hope you like that surprise. It was too. We, it was, I'm glad he was able to make that it was, here and uh, and do that. You I, got Redmond Cahill. He did he surprise it. me. Hi, I'm Remy Kale. I'm a senior here, and I'm uh, very involved in different school activities, uh, like such as like running the student section and things like that, and missions. And uh, me and some of my friends wanted to know if we sent you some ND gear, you would uh, post pictures in it on your social medias. And uh, shout out ND. Hell yeah, I like that. I'm a medium too. I'm a good looking medium. I love it. Well, uh, put some uh, swag down with your dad uh, on flight and uh, just take a picture, post, tag it, add into WH Athletics, and, and we'll get it out. All right, who else has a question I for I promise. Him? Who's got a question? So, hi, I'm Declan Woodman, and I was wondering what marketing platforms do you use besides social media? Great question. And you waved to me earlier when I had my little thing shut off, but you waved to me earlier. So I wanted to wave back to you, Declan. Um, so we use a lot, we use a lot of things. Um, so the cool thing is in being in Silicon Valley, it's amazing because these things um, tend to, I mean, we, there are hundreds that we don't even know about and thousands that'll never make it. Um, but there are, um, there are platforms that are social connections to folks. Like for instance, uh, you know, we have all of our players on a, on a platform called Socially. And Socially is kind of a private connect um, point to point where if let's say, you know, uh, George Kittle or Jimmy G or any of those guys want to send us something that we're going to put on our, on our platforms, they can literally send it there and then we can tag it for them and bounce it back to them. It's kind of a cool way for them to not make any mistakes or um, have us make their stuff look really, really good. Um, but the growing pieces for us really, um, you know, above and beyond the ones that you know about, I mean, Snapchat has been incredible for us. It's really tough for us to, to monetize. It's a younger audience and, you know, younger folks don't spend as much money. The, the people who spend money in the country are typically about 35 to 55. But we found our engagement on Snapchat is allowing us to think about platforms like that a lot wider and reaching audiences like, you know, guys your age and younger. Um, but on top of that, you know, just pieces of software that we think are, are unbelievable are really data capture software, um, software that allows us to actually go into if we post something and it gets 10,000 comments, we actually have something that sifts through those comments and tells us this, it actually measures the sentiment of what the people are thinking. Like, are they pissed at us? Are they pumped with us? You know, what do they want to see? Does it call out someone's name? And we have people in our business and strategy analytics group, which I call the smart kids. And they literally come to me and they'll be like, hey, look, uh, this is trending and people are really pumped about this. So then we start to learn from all these platforms and we start to create content based on the learnings that we're getting. So we're not just kind of blindly creating we're actually create, we're fishing with fish, as they say. We're creating things because of these platforms that we're, we're using. Um, gosh, above the big four, right? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. To give you a, an answer, I don't really, there's not a lot more that we're using. The one big one that we're using, which is kind of cool, if, if when you go to places, you'll see it is called Tagboard. Tagboard allows you to put a hashtag on something like ND, ND Sports or, or you, know, you, know, um, you know, ND Football. And it'll actually take images from anything tagged and it'll put them on a big screen. So like, you know, we have, we have a huge 200 by 50 foot screen and people tag themselves, go Niners or be legendary. Those are our tags and their images get right to the board. So our cameras don't even have to shoot people, but they're actually placed on the board. You'll see them at the Super Bowl, college football playoffs. A lot of, if you go to any Yankees games, Yankees use tag board, the Bo Sox do. Um, so I'd say tag board is another big one, but that's more, connectivity from the fans to to the uh to the teams uh, we have a question here from mr heideck who's a big philadelphia eagles fan so he kind of wishes you were back with the eagles but he's got a question for you i, I, so I got a lot of got a lot of love a lot of love for the eagles a lot of love as a matter of fact i've been talking to my guys all week long because they're giving me a lot of experience they just obviously went and won and we were thrilled to pieces they sent me all my all eagles gear to win I just sent them all Niners gear, hoping the same juju works. But I've been, I've been pulling their, their experience 
on what they experienced from the Super Bowl to try to help my crew. So, sorry, continue. Hi, Rob. Uh, you have a pretty sweet job. What is the hardest thing on a daily basis you have to deal with or with your people underneath you? Managing people, period. Um, you know, I think, I think I speak for all the teachers in this room that no kid is built the same. And so none of my, you know, employees are built the same. And, and I, I don't like to use the word, you know, people who work for me because nobody works for me. They work with me. But on any given day, nobody walks through that door right there and says, you know what, Rob, you're doing a great job. See ya. They're always like, I need, I want, this happened. How do we get it? And, you know, I empathize with your teachers because I'm also a mentor in, in a local high school. And I deal with, you know, I deal with a very small portion of what they deal with. But on a given day, managing people, you know, what makes this person move? What makes this person move? What will tick this person off? What ticks this person off? And so I've got to manage all these different personalities, just like your teachers have to manage you guys. And, and I, you know, as the top of the food chain, n nobody's really asked me like nobody's really managing me to be very very honest uh you know it, at the top of the food chain i basically have to attend to a lot of needs um and i have to put myself my family often second um in order for these folks to do their thing and and, and that's a burden uh, physically emotionally personally um that's why I, I probably don't sleep about four hours a night that that's the hardest part getting logistics together to fly 1200 people to Miami create incredible content is a layup in an empty gym compared to dealing with 30 people on any given day. Um, so when you guys are businessmen or you own your own businesses or you're working for some incredible company, just remember those words, the more people you have, the more challenging it gets. And, and, and hopefully uh, the compensation is worth it because that's the, that's the biggest challenge for me on any given day is managing, managing humans. All right. Another question for the student. What's your best memory working in the NFL? Oh, I was hoping somebody would ask me a question like that. Um, oh, my best memory. I'll tell you, you know, um, probably the day that I was hired by the Philadelphia Eagles, I remember driving into the stadium and, and I had to pinch myself because I finally, you know, there's only 300 people at this point on any team. Uh, and there's only 32 teams. Um, you do the math, that's a lot of bodies. And, you know, there's not a lot of vice presidents. There's one for every team. You do the math, there's what, 370 million people in America. And every day I'm blessed to come to work and, and have the opportunity to do the things that I'm doing every single day. Um, getting hired is a big one. Um, everybody asks, what's your favorite game? Um, you know, and, and so that would be a moment as well. But I would say, um, if it was a physical moment in time, uh, I got to probably go to either the opening of the new Arrowhead Stadium, which I was I was tasked with doing. Uh, we beat the Chargers on Monday night, and it was just an incredible moment. And the owner, Clark Hunt, who I will see in a couple of days, turned to me and said, my father, Lamar Hunt, who the Lamar Hunt Trophy is named after, he said to me, that's the greatest moment in our history. And my father's in heaven smiling at you. And I thought, wow, like I lost, I lost it at that point. Tied for that would be winning the NFC championship and beating. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that I can get on the horn with you guys in about maybe 10 days and tell you that I got a better moment. But those are the two best ones right now. Now, you, you mentioned Kansas City and opening that stadium. You worked for them for a bunch of years. You're playing them in the Super Bowl. How ironic is that? Because you got to have some friends who still work there. Uh, yeah, a lot of the folks that I hired are still there, and I talk to, to my center of influence, Mark, all the time. Their voice is uh, one of my best friends in the whole world. His name's Mitch Holtis. He's the guy that you hear yelling, touchdown, Kansas City. Um, I, I, I've been on the horn with them every week because we're going to do a lot of, we're gonna, we're gonna do a lot of uh, synchronous work with them so that we're, we're not burning fuel on both ends. And um, uh, it's a tough one. Uh, to be honest, it's a win-win because I'm so happy to just be here. I clearly want to you know, I, I want to take home the prize, but if I don't, the, the people on the other side are just as deserving. Um, they're just incredible, incredible humans. And it's, it's probably one of the finest places I've ever worked at. Uh, often think that it's, uh, you know, it, it, I wouldn't be here obviously if it wasn't for the Kansas city chiefs. So they got a lot of love in my heart, but yeah, it's a tough one. It's like, uh, it's like playing your brother, you know, it's no, it's no good. There's no, if you win this, I just, as my fact, my son works for the Vikings 
And he was here when we, we beat them and we beat them handily. And I, the second it was over, it was all business. I gave him a hug and a kiss and we went out and had a beer because you can't really celebrate beating your son. That's no fun, right? <laughs> How are the players and coaches to deal with on a daily basis? You know, uh, you've got to deal with them a lot. Are they, they got to be, uh, they got to help you out to do your job, right? Yeah, they're, um, they're incredible. They're, they're incredible. You know, Kyle, Kyle's a young guy. He's, uh, I think he's like 37 or 38. He's like your age, Kirk. He's, uh, he's young. And, <laughs> he, um, yeah. <laughs> and, and John Lynch is amazing. Um, the players are incredible. You know, back in the day when I was at the Eagles, I was in those guys' weddings. I was going out with those guys on a weekly basis. Now I'm an old man. And so now I'm the father figure as opposed to the compadre, right? I mean, I remember my son being six years old sitting in my house playing Matt, playing the Eagles against hand to God, Donovan McNabb sitting on my couch and they're playing Madden and he's playing Donovan. It was the weirdest thing. Doesn't happen anymore. Now they come to me for advice and, and uh, I spent a lot of time and I'm close with a lot of them, but our team is, it is literally a group of incredible humans. I mean, there aren't, there are, there are some teams that are not likable. There are some players that are not likable. On our team, I cannot pick one of them. I would have said Richard Sherman, right? If you guys know football, he was our arch enemy, played for the Seahawks. Now he's on our team. I couldn't believe that it didn't want anything to do with him. The second I met him, he held the door for me, didn't even know me, gave me a fist pump, gave me a hug. I welcomed him to the team. I'm like, God, I love that guy. Two minutes ago, I hated his guts. So we have, uh, you know, we just have an incredible team of, of very, very good humans and I'm blessed to be able to, you know, to be able to market this team. Um, so they're, they're really easy to work with. Now everybody's getting a little tight now that we're going to the Super Bowl, but they know that we've all been there alongside of them the whole way. So they're less, you know, they're, they're, they're closing their gap and trying to keep the media out, but they're keeping everybody who's been, you know, who's ride with them. We're, we're the ones who've been riding with them. So, so it's been a good, it's been a good run. Tell us a little about Andy Reid, coach of Kansas City. You worked with him in Philadelphia and Kansas City. Now you're on opposite sides uh, of, the, of, the, of the big game. Andy Reid's a big man, by the way. He eats guys like you for breakfast. I mean, that guy, he's, he's that, he wears red, and we, we call him Big Red because he is a moose. And he, um, I, he was my coach from 99 to 2010. And then we, I went to the Chiefs, and we had an idea all along that we were going to go get Andy Reid and bring him to the Chiefs. And we literally went and got Andy Reid in a plane, sat and pitched him for eight hours to become the Kansas City Chiefs coach. And he, um, he, he's an amazing guy. He's a guy that you can't help but root for. Um, you know, he, he's demanding. Uh, he is a winner. He hasn't won the whole thing. And, and I know that he's also had some really crazy challenges. Son, um, some of his sons got mixed up in some rough things. One of his sons now a coach on, on the team. So he's really righted his ship. Um, I wish all the best for Andy. Do I want to kick his pants? Absolutely. Hopefully we can, you know, hopefully we can, he can win next year. I just got to win it this year, but I'm very close with Andy. I can't wait to see him and, and his whole coaching staff. I mean, they were all at my kids' christenings and things. So um, it's a tough one, but he, he's, he's an easy coach to root for. We're coming up against the clock here. Does anyone else have a question? Anyone else have a question? Hi there. My name's Matt, and I'm a senior here at Notre Dame. <clears throat> um, just thinking about <clears throat> your job and all this stuff, if you were to interact with any player every day on the 49ers, who would you interact with and why? Good question. Good question, Matt. I think um... – got to be George Kittle just because he's the most entertaining guy. He's our tight end number 85. Um, he is one of the finest football players I've ever seen ever in my 25 years. And I've seen a lot of them. He, he, this, this is the second thing he's good at. The second best thing he's good at. He should literally be a pro wrestler because he's insane. He's kind. He's funny. Um, I'll give you, I'll give you a great example of why I think my, uh, my optometrist, clearly, as I'm getting older, I have to have glasses, called me one day, and it was uh, the day before the, the Carolina game that we put like 50 up on him. It was the day before that. He said, my best friend's son has brain cancer, and he's going in for an emergency operation tonight. And I mean, we just kind of had a moment, and he's like, you know, is there anything you can do to cheer this kid up when he gets out of surgery? And I literally took my, I'm like, I got it. 
And I went downstairs and George um, had, we were trying on, we have these really cool throwback white uniforms and we were trying them on them. And I said, George, here's a scoop. And I told him what I just told you guys. He said, give me your phone. He gave me the phone. I gave him the phone and I still have it. And he recorded a moment like, hey man, we're all rooting for you, you know, get better, da, da, da. And then he was like, woo! And it was really a great moment. And I sent it to the kid and the kid had not been out of bed for like 20 hours. Um, he was just a little kid, 11 years old, man. I, I mean, 11 years old going through that kind of trauma. He got out of bed and was dancing and his dad was videotaping it. And then he sent a video back to me of the kid addressing George. I went right to the weight room, which is I can throw a baseball and hit it. It's right here. And I found George. I was like, yo, 85, come here. He came running out and I showed it to him and he started crying. And that's why George would be the guy. He's amazing. He's a soundbite. Every time he opens his mouth, he's kind, he's nice. He, flew, he moved his parents here so they could live near him, married his high school sweetheart. He's just an awesome dude. Awesome dude. All right. Any other questions? Any other questions? We got to get you guys back to class. I know you don't want to, but. <laughs> has, oh, <clears throat> has George ever told you anything about the letters his dad writes him? Yeah. As a matter of fact, we helped break that story. So yeah, his, and, and uh, if you guys haven't seen it, just, uh, just post, uh, just, just Google, you know, George letters from dad. It's, it's a pretty nice thing. It's a, too long to explain, but he and his dad have an incredible relationship and his dad was his football coach throughout his whole life. Just, just a great example of what a man should be. And, and, you know, you guys should be figuring out what those examples are as you go on. Um, but I wanted to, Kirk, can I give a piece of advice to this group before, uh, before we shut it down? Absolutely. That's what you're here for. Awesome. Awesome. I'm hoping to come back at some point. I'm coming back, I think, March 3rd for that whole week. I just really want to get back to Connecticut, but not when there's like snow on the ground because I'm, I'm a little soft now that I've been living in California. Um, but the, um, you know, the one thing I want to say is, that, you know, I often, I have a 16 year old daughter, I have a 23 year old son and an 11 year old daughter. And I often think if I was sitting in your guys' seats, you know, I know your parents tell you lots of things and you may brush them off because they're your folks. Um, maybe you have, you know, uncles or whatever, you listen to them a little bit more. I just want to give you guys a message that I think is really, really important. And, and I want this to sink in. It's, it's time to slow down. This is the time to slow down a little bit. This is the time you don't need to be 21 right now. You don't need to be 24 right now. You need to be whatever age you guys are right now. Enjoy everything. I, I would pay $10,000 right now to have dinner with my father who's in that room. I, I don't know if he left or not, but because I can't see the, the full room. But this, this is the time to sit with your folks and eat dinner, watch TV, play cards, whatever. Just talk and hang out. This is the time to work hard and get the things you need to get done. If I could go back and tell my 16, 17, or 18-year-old self, I would say, Take the time to do all things you want to do, but don't rush to get to college or the next level. You have plenty of time. I would have put a lot more work into high school. I, not that I would change the outcome of things. I would put a lot more work into relationships, you know, with the people that I might not see for the, you know, but three, four times a year anymore. Slow down, enjoy where you are, smell the roses, enjoy that journey. Um, get involved in everything that you can, but enjoy that moment. And, you know, when you get a chance, if you're lucky to have siblings or your folks, go home, give them a hug, spend some time with them. I mean, I can tell you, they want that more than anything that you guys can possibly give them. They want you to sit down on the couch and hang out with them. I promise you, I promise that. So work hard. Hopefully I get to see some of your faces, you know, in the next uh, month and a half. And hopefully knock on wood, I'm a Super Bowl champion at that point. Cause I might just streak all the way down the hallway just because I'm not going to get expelled at that point. And so <laughs> I'm just excited to, I'm excited to, uh, to see some of these faces and see how you guys go and, and your journey. And I talked to Steve, uh, once a month, we've been, we've stayed in touch for, for geez, it's gotta be 30 years at this point. So, so you've got some good people there. Take your time, enjoy it. And, and, uh, and just slow it down a little bit. Hey Rob, can't thank you enough. I, I'm going to ask for one favor when you get back. We got a kid who graduated, we got a, we got a kid who graduated a couple years ago. Led the University of Iowa in receptions. He would go great in your offense. His name is Nico Regani. So we need you to drop that name to your scouting. Oh, what a great what a Nico great last name! Are you kidding me? He imagine if Garoppolo threw to Regani. Oh my God, that would be amazing. Let's, let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. I love it, man. I love it, and uh, and I really appreciate you guys taking your time out. You know, work hard. Enjoy it, and uh, hopefully, I don't care what team you root for, 
you know, just be a Niners fan for like 10 more days and, and get, us, uh, get us some love, all right? I, I think you got a bunch of San Francisco 49ers fans on Super Bowl Sunday. All right. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys, and thanks, Kirk. We'll catch up soon. All right, we will uh, we'll get you that gear and uh, just tag us at NDWH Athletics. We'll get it out, and uh, we definitely got some 49ers fans on Super Bowl Sunday for you. I can't wait. Make sure my pop brings it. We, we'll make sure. Thank you. Uh, all right, guys. Take care.